What's up everybody, CHM Carnivores here and I hope that you're having a wonderful day and a wonderful week. Today I'm bringing you a video and we're going to talk all about cuttings. We're going to talk about uh, what to do once you get them, where you can get them, what you can expect once you have them, how to take care of them, and the different options that you have when purchasing them. Stick around. All right, everybody, I hope that you're doing well. As we talked about, as I talked about in the very beginning here, we're going to talk all about cuttings. Now, a lot of plant, a lot of places traditionally sell seed grown plants. And so that is an amazing experience or tissue culture plants. This is also an amazing experience. You get to see that plant grow from a very small plant into a larger one. Now, not everybody has the time and or patience to wait a couple of years, three, four, five, even uh, 10, 20 years to see that plant maturate into full size. But don't worry, there are options for those people like myself who tend to want to have that faster uh, experience, if you will, and that are that is cuttings. Now, there are a couple different options that you can get when you purchase cuttings. Most um, growers will offer them. Uh, some of the more commercial growers, like a Carnivero or Predatory Plants, will only offer them very, very rarely, and when they do, they tend to be very expensive. Red, uh, Red Leaf Exotics also offers them. They have beautiful, beautiful plants. They can be very pricey, uh, but you will get larger cuttings for that. But there are other options. Todd's Carnivores is a, or Todd's Tropicals rather, on eBay is a perfect, perfect, uh, reputable person to buy these plants from, and you will almost always get cuttings. He does have some seed grown plants, some seedlings, but you will get mostly cuttings. Now, what is the benefit? So we already talked about the benefit of having it is that you already have a grown plant. There are, uh, there are a few more benefits. One, a cutting is essentially exactly what, well not essentially, is exactly what it sounds like. That is where somebody has cut a, a, a piece of the vine off of a mature plant. And there are little nodes, as we've talked about on our other videos, there are little tiny nodes that grow right above where the leaf and the stem meet on your plant. And those are potential inactive growth nodes. And so when you take a cutting, you uh, put that in the ground, or you put that in your medium, it grows roots. The benefit that you get as a purchaser of these cuttings is you have a plant that's already been, uh, has tons of vitamins, tons of nutrients. It's already built up a tolerance to pests. So in, in, in most cases, you're gonna get a very healthy plant. Now, the downside to them is that they can be, depending on the species or the hybrid, they can be a little less tolerant of changes in their environment. So it's always a good idea to understand, again, I always say this in my videos, understand where uh, where these plants come from in their natural habitat, understand how the grower is growing them. So it's always, uh, it's always a good idea to ask the grower what their conditions are looking like so that you can mimic those. If the grower happens to have a higher humidity level, you might try the whole bag um, bagging acclimation process. We've talked about in other videos, is having your plant in a Ziploc bag and then slowly opening that to sort of bring that acclimation to your humidity levels. Now, once you get your, uh, your cutting, there are two different types you can get. Growers will offer these. I think it's called Red Barn Exotics. There's a lot of uncut uh, cuttings or unrooted cuttings rather. And in those cases, exactly like they sound, they've just cut them and they are shipping out uh, them out to you uh, with no roots on them at all. Be warned about this though, this is not a process for somebody who is just getting started. Getting Nepenthes to root from cuttings can be difficult. It's not impossible, but it can be difficult. You're gonna want, uh, once you get those plants in, you're immediately gonna want to put a, um, a rooting agent on that cut part, put it into a sphagnum uh, moss, uh, and make sure that ball is nice and nice and tight uh, so there's no airflow or very limited airflow and then plant that into a smaller pot. And then it also sometimes helps some growers to actually grow them on a heat map, a heat mat, right? Like you would do seedlings. Now I have seen people also grow cuttings in water. So you put them in water, make sure the water's clean and they will grow roots. I would say be very, very careful in this case, especially with Nepenthes as they are, they do have a tendency to stem rot. Uh, but I have seen people do it successfully. Now the much, much easier option is to buy rooted cuttings. And a lot of times when you get this, the individual, the, the grower has taken the time, these plants are normally six months to a year old, once you purchase them, so they're gonna have an established root ball. So when you first get it in, more often times than not, 
that cutting will be in that really tight bound sphagnum moss in a very small pot. So you might have a cutting that is quite large and, um, and it's gonna be bound in that tiny little pot. Especially ask the grower again, how long it's been since they've had that cutting. And if they give you a longer period of time, it would be very, very advantageous for you to go ahead and up pot it right away. Now to reduce the shock on the plant, I recommend a soft repot. So instead of a hard repot where you remove all of the media from the roots, leave it in the ball, tease it out of the pot, put your sphagnum moss and your perlite in a, uh, another larger pot, put a little hole in the middle like this with your hands and put that cutting with the root ball right in that hole, cover it up. And that way now you have an area uh, media with that sphagnum and that perlite and you have allowed that plant to have as little bit of a shock as possible by not uncovering its roots. Nepenthes, depending on the species again, have a tendency to be a little bit cantankerous when you start removing them from their habitat. Some are, are worse than others. Edwardsiana is one of those that gets really, really angry when you remove it from the uh, environment that it's gotten used to. Now, the other benefit to a cutting is that they go, they're going to grow exponentially faster. So with a, with a seedling or a small plant, they will grow slower. We've already talked about that. That's a given. When you get a cutting, remember, it's already had all those nutrients. And if you've bought a cutting that's six months to a year old, it's already established a root base and it is already uh, adding all of that uh, advancement into its growth tip and it will grow a lot faster for you. So keep that in mind for two reasons. One, you get the instant gratification, which we all love, but two, make sure that you have plenty of room in your grow space because it will grow faster. Now, if you uh, also uh, keep in mind with the cuttings is, sorry, I'm just looking here. One thing that they did not teach or I did not learn about and I got nervous about is a Nepenthes is a wooded viney plant. And so what will happen with that cutting more often than not is the wood, the, so the cutting will grow out of the node and wherever that vine was a cut, it may be green when you get it, but that vine will slowly turn brown and will become a woody vine that is completely normal. And that is not, I repeat, not uh, stem rot. Now it will appear like stem rot from the beginning uh, as it starts to brown and thicken as it moves away from that cut of uh, that node. Uh, don't be alarmed by that. That is okay. Uh, that is not stem rot. That is a natural um, way that the plant is killing off or not killing off, dormitizing, if you will, not a word, but I'll make it. Um, sending that part of the uh, plant into dormancy and it is growing the live growth there so it's not wasting any energy on that cut part. Now with cuttings the other thing to take in, uh, to keep in mind is depending on where the grower cut the plant you're either going to get uppers, intermediates, or lowers and so that is something to take into account when you're buying these cuttings. If you are wanting lower pitchers, there is a likelihood that you are gonna get upper pitchers until it grows a basil. And that is perfectly okay, that's perfectly normal. Uh, Nepenthes uh, have gorgeous upper pitchers and lower pitchers. Most species grow different ones, and so they're really neat to observe no matter what stage they are. Now, here's a helpful hint. If you want to uh, plant that's gonna basil for you a lot, a good hybrid in general, but also a good uh, cutting to buy is one that has a ventricosa in it. Ventricosa brings a lot of stability to hybrids. It brings a lot of uh, growth and vigor to plants. And it also has that the reputation for uh, basiling a lot. And so some of the plants I've got, like the Ventricosa bongzo merliana, it's got uh, obviously ventricosa in it. And so it immediately started basiling. And now I have two basils from it. Now, when you're picking a, uh, a cutting, I always say, look for the cutting that's got the most nodes. And so it's okay, again, to ask these growers if there are any more inactive nodes on the plant. Now you think inactive, that doesn't really seem like it would matter that much to you, but it does. Because those plants don't want to waste energy. It will almost invariably activate those inactive nodes. And so what you'll end up getting is a plant with multiple growth points on it and more plant for your buck. And that's always, always nice. 
Now, as you've seen in my other videos, the other advantage, advantage of having a plant with multiple growth nodes is if you are a clumsy grower like me and you continuously break off the growth tips on your plant, you have a plan B option where that plant will grow a basil from those growth nodes. Those are known as aerial nodes. Uh, once they have a cutting, they'll just become a basil and they'll grow a new plant for you. This is specifically important when you're buying those more expensive cuttings, right? Because you, you wanna have a backup plan in case you have to cut the main vine because it gets some sort of fungus, or if you're like me and you happen to break them off. Now that is a lot of information about cuttings. I highly recommend cuttings. I like to do a little bit of both having seedling plants, seeds that I'm growing, smaller, uh, small size plants, and then cuttings so that I have a little bit of uh, different growth and different life cycles of the plants throughout. And that way I can enjoy all of it at once. Now keep in mind, if you want to collect only cuttings, you are running the risk of your growth space filling up very, very fast. With a regular size seedling or a small plant, you've got plenty of time to sit back and enjoy it. With a cutting, especially the larger one you buy, they are going to grow fast. I have uh, two cuttings that I'm currently looking at that I bought not even a month and a half ago, and they've already almost doubled in size. So that is something to definitely keep in mind. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope uh, you spread the word. If you have liked the video, I would ask that you just please subscribe and then uh, share it with everyone. Again, the, the hope here and the goal here at CHN Carnivores is to spread the word about these wonderful plants, get as many people involved in collecting these plants as we can, and we, we can push them back away from extinction. I hope you've enjoyed. Have a wonderful day, and I hope you have a wonderful week. See you soon.